The pro-Israel lobby is spending a lot of money on American politicians. A Guardian investigation found that members of Congress who supported Israel at the start of its war on Gaza received the most money from pro-Israel donors during their last elections. About $125,000 more on average. Take a look at this chart from the Guardian investigation. Each circle represents a Congress member. And the circle size represents the amount of money they receive from pro-Israel donors. You might think the top recipients of those donations were Republicans, but most were actually centrist Democrats. Chantal Brown, Haley Stevens, and Glenn Ivey. And they defeated progressives during primaries. Collectively, they received over $17 million from pro-Israel lobby groups like the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, or APAC, and other pro-Israel groups. But these findings aren't that surprising. Pro-Israel groups have a long track record of giving millions to lawmakers. Through November 2023, a month after Israel started bombing Gaza, APAC gave $3.7 million in political contributions. And Congress has a long history of accepting millions in contributions from the pro-Israel lobby. On the Democrat side, as a senator, Joe Biden received the most money since 1990, and upward of $4.3 million. Hillary Clinton accepted $2.3 million. And Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, $1.7 million. And on the other side of the aisle, Mitch McConnell and Ted Cruz are among the top Republican recipients of pro-Israel donations. They've received over $1.9 and $1.2 million respectively. So why are pro-Israel groups contributing to campaigns in the first place? Experts say it varies, but the objectives are usually either to sway legislators to take a pro-Israel stance or to get even more support for Israel from their existing allies in Congress. One such ally is John Fetterman, who received about $244,000 from the pro-Israel lobby, despite billing himself as a progressive during his campaign. But in some cases, the goal of pro-Israel donors is to attack, especially those critical of Israel, like the squad. For example, in 2021, APAC ran attack ads that were seen as Islamophobic against Ilhan Omar. And an urban empowerment action pack targeted Representative Rashida Tlaib, the first Palestinian American woman to serve in Congress. In 2022, the PAC spent over $1 million on Janice Winfrey, a candidate who tried to oust Tlaib. Pro-Israel spending can have real consequences. We're seeing its influence play out in Congress's behavior toward the recent assault on Gaza. That same Guardian analysis found that 82% of Congress was more supportive of Israel than Palestine during the first six weeks of Israel's war on Gaza. But poll after poll has shown that most Americans want Israel to announce a ceasefire. One poll from the Data for Progress found that 61% of likely U.S. voters support a permanent ceasefire and the de-escalation of violence in Gaza, while only 11% of Congress has called for a ceasefire. Let us know in the comments if you want to learn more about how lobbying impacts U.S. politics.